Hello everybody, welcome to Daily Entomologist. Um, listening, continue working on the collection. Got started on doing ants. Um, I've spread some more butterflies. Got some, a couple drawers to show you that I've filled out this past week. Um, uh, just over a month before my first collecting trip of the season which I can't wait until that happens and hopefully you guys will enjoy that too I'm not telling you where yet that will be a surprise but uh, yeah so I guess we'll just get into it alright so one of the groups that I took out before to begin sorting through and identifying are my Cerambicids, the Longhorn Beetles. And this uh, was actually completely full. And but so I've been getting some work on it using a computer and with the help of this key here. This has been awesome using this. Here I'm gonna Move these and so I see uh, it has a key and these are pretty much for almost all the longhorns found in eastern North America. So all my longhorns from Wisconsin and Arkansas and um, Texas as well actually. I can I've been able to key them out in here. It's a huge key too. And it's awesome because at the end there's uh, plates with uh, different uh, different species. So you once you like key it out or you want to compare it to a picture in here, you can easily do that. Oh. I forgot to turn on the light. Uh, yeah so that's been really nice and uh, Boris at the uh, insect museum actually gave me this copy so uh, that was really really nice of him they have others there so he let me have this one and let me tell you I've been using it and it's coming handy yeah that's the uh, illustrated key to the longhorn woodborne beetles of the eastern United States by uh, Lingo Felter awesome awesome book really grateful he let me have it gave it to me uh, definitely invaluable so see I went from this and these are the ones I've done so far kind of little hodgepodge of everything um, and this will be eventually rearranged when I add more specimens and all that type of stuff, but this is my Serambicid drawer for now. A couple mega silene there. I love the decora, mega silene decora, that's awesome. This is a subspecies Vagti that comes into southern Texas, which is, I got that in Brownsville. Uh, I got a few species of Oberia.
This is actually a species that was introduced here. At least there's good local populations here in northern Colorado to uh, control uh, leafy spurge, I believe it is. Uh, so I got a few of those. Uh, tetropes. Got a tetrathalmus there and femoratus there. This is a genus that I really want to get more of. I really like this genus, so I'm really hoping to get a lot more, find more species this year to add to those. You know, Hippopsis, really long antenna, very interesting beetle. And of course, here you got the uh, Pletrodera, Scalator, the Cottonwood Boar. Awesome, large, beautiful species. Absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the quick or the rundown of what I have done for my Serenbisted so far. And I like the way it's turning out. I got uh, some prionines to the ID here. I got I still have some stuff from Eastern North America, but almost a good portion of these ones are from Colorado. That I'll slowly make my way through. But yeah, so I guess we'll go on to the next park here. All right, before I get to the uh, other drawer in the last part of this video, uh, it was a quick video. Not a whole lot no one on, just showing you the finished stuff that I've been doing. Anyway, let me do a quick look at just uh, and so I got all these empty uh, trays out from the other drawers and stuff. And uh, I'm going to start filling them up with uh, ants. Let's see, just here, uh, uh, started filling up. I have a Tapanoma Sicily there. And over here we have a Pagodal Myrmex Sacidentalis. Um, these are just ones that are finished and on their way or getting in their trays so I actually have, I have a lot more of each of these species so this trays will be filled up here soon but uh here are the ants that are currently on the lists or awaiting their new labels which I have printed out and I'll start getting those on here today and all that type of stuff. You see we have a humongous awesome Neo Panera Velosa. Humongous impressive ant. Um, it's also called the Texas Bullet Ant or Panther Ant. Um, and these babies pack a sting. They, uh, they're found in the U.S. down in southern Texas up into a little bit of central Texas. So, they're not, uh, Texas is pretty much the only place you can collect them in the U.S. And, uh, I made the mistake of, when I first saw them, I made the mistake of picking them up because I was so excited to collect it. That was, uh, that was, a, that was a mistake. It was on par with a scorpion sting. I mean, that hurt for quite a while. But, anyway. So, yeah. Starting to do ants. And, uh, it's going to be a tedious process, but I'm excited to finally actually start getting them done. Alright, so. This is the other drawer. I completed this week. See, it's pretty much the rest of my swallowtails. 
lot of the most of the darker or the darker species save for the you're me down there the pale swallowtail we had a awesome row of uh, pipe vine swallowtail and I just love the coloration of the underside underside of the hind weight of pipe vine swallowtails I mean that's just gorgeous you can hopefully see how metallic it is as well I mean that's crazy and we got a uh, males and female of uh, black swallowtail Papilio polyxenes we have a uh, indra uh, Palamedes, of course, the pale, the uh, spice bush. We have the uh, giant swallowtails, which, if you didn't know, there are not. Uh, there's now the eastern giant swallowtail and the western giant swallowtail, and the differences between them are kind of. Uh, very uh, minor differences. Like the wing and uh, the yellow on the abdomen. And uh, look at the other side. But from what I've seen here, this has the Markers that indicate that it is indeed the western giant swallowtail, the Papilio rumico, and these are indeed the eastern Crisfontes. Um, this is well, like it's relatively recent within the last, oh, I don't know, five years, maybe. Well, it's it's, it's kind of recent. Relatively, but yeah. So I just went the new swallowtail species hidden in the species I had. Um, it's kind. Some people wonder if it's if it's really a true species and all that type of stuff. But uh, as far as I know, it's being accepted. Uh, from people so I'm gonna follow it as well and yeah that's how confusing taxonomy can be now I'm not actually gonna try and show you one of the characters that differentiate them Zoom in here if they'll focus. I guess it doesn't want to focus. Okay, there we go. But if you see these two full lines that go down on the thorax there. And see how much the yellow goes up on the abdomen. Uh, if you look, you see there's more uh, black on the top of the abdomen there. As well as that line there, it's not a complete line. It's part of the line and just a couple dots. So you can see where it breaks. It's a line and then dot and then the dot and here it's a complete line. So that's that's one of the uh, differences that they pointed out um, to differentiate the two. There's uh, other ones as well. 
Um, but of course, in certain parts where they meet in like central Texas, uh, apparently there are some sp specimens that show like characteristics of both. Um, so, I don't know. I'm going to leave it as the uh, rumor crow is uh, for now. But yeah. So, kind of rambled on there. And not a whole bunch of different stuff, just in this video, just going through kind of what I did this week. Um, so hopefully the hopefully the next video will be a little bit more variety to look at. But, I mean, you can't beat a box of awesome butterflies like that. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Comment, like, subscribe. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time.